We are now excited to be joined by Joy Cabell, former Detroit Lion and Benton Harbor, Na Benton Harbor native, excuse me. Joy, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So you got a, a community event um, going on this sure. weekend in your hometown, June 23rd to the, the 26th, uh, aimed at combating you know, illiteracy in, in your community. Can you tell us a little bit about the cause and what you have going on this weekend? Oh yeah, so uh, the event starts on Thursday. It ends on the 25th on Saturday. Uh, so everything that we have doing, so <clears throat> I remember growing up, we used to have this thing back in my community. It used to, call, it used to be called the Benicia Festival. So every, every year I would look forward to it. Every summer it was like one of the only things really doing the summertime besides playing sports. And so um, I started up my, my nonprofit my first year in the NFL and wanted to start giving back to the community. And one thing that I love about my community is that I, I can kind of go around and, you know, I can go and tap in with the community, see what's needed and, you know, and, and direct my cause towards that, for that particular cause. And so <clears throat> one thing that was really disturbing to me when, um, I started researching more and more and more on what the community needed uh, was the the literacy levels of um, the children of my community. So when I did the research, about 90 to 95% of our youth were reading below grade level. And so I wanted to uh, figure out what can I do? How can I bring in some of my resources back to the community to kind of help out and give our kids a brighter future? Because I think everyone knows that reading is fundamental. Right? And so, um, I teamed up with a group called Beyond Basics, and they've done great work here in Detroit. They help thousands of kids. I believe hundreds of kids are in their program right now. And I was able to look at the data of kind of the things that they've done here in the community, in the city. And I was like, you know what? I want to bring this to Ben Harbor. And so um, I guess our paths were already aligned because they were already looking into Ben Harbor. And so um, I partnered with them and, you know, our money that we're raising this year will go towards funding this program. That's great. So what can you tell us about just the event that you have going on? Um, what kind of things are are planned and how are you hoping to, to get out there and, and make an impact in the community? It kicks off on Thursday and what it, and what it is, it starts Thursday evening, six o'clock. You can purchase tickets on drugbelt.com. So the first day will be bowling. So we have a, a celebrity bowling tournament where I have a lot of my friends coming to town um, and I think we're just going to have the bowling tournament that night. We cater food, um, come out, have drinks, have a great time. It's more of a, a meet and greet and kind of the kickoff of the weekend. And then Friday will be the start of the golf outing. Registration starts at 9 a.m. Um, shotgun starts at 10. Afterwards, we'll have the reception, um, passing off the awards, um, the silent auction, a lot of, a lot of things we have in store. Um, later that evening, we have a gala that evening, uh, which you can also get tickets online for that as well on for Friday on the 24th. Then Saturday, we have um, a 5K um, that morning uh, to kind of kick off the day. Uh, and then we, it's followed by my football and dance camp. I have teamed up with Legacy and Rocky Mortgage. Um, we're going to uh, sponsor 200 clicks to the kids. Uh, kids seven to eight, and if the kids, if you got want some new cleats, sign up right now at joybill.com. If you want to bring your 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 children, just go to joybill.com, click on charity weekend, and you'll see all the events that I have for the upcoming weekend. Um, I also have a dance camp where I'll be having uh, former Beyonce background dancer um, Diddy Ama. Nice. Uh, <laughs> she'll so she'll be coming to town. She actually just flew in town yesterday. And um, she'll so be heading to Ben Harbor with me tomorrow. Um, so she'll be running my dance camp. Uh, we have a resource workshop where we're gonna have different vendors there to talk about cryptocurrency, talk about investing, real estate, um, health and wellness, mental health awareness. Um, so we have like all these different resources we're bringing back. We'll have food trucks for the kids and a lot of different things for, you know, just so the, for the parents as well. Um, Along with that, which I think is probably the biggest, one of the biggest elements of the weekend is that right now my city has been devastated with the water crisis, with the lead pipes. And so um, I'm teaming up with um, Wayne State and we're going to bring down a couple units 
uh, or they can do a, a mass lab testing on the people that may be or may not be affected in the community, but I think they should know. And so we're gonna do it on a mass scale. And so I think that'll be huge for the charity weekend and also huge for the community. Um, we teamed up with um, the local health, public health services there. So anyone that, anyone that is affected uh, can know the next steps. I think that's crucial. Sure. You, you've been doing this charity weekend for a while now. How have you seen it grow from when you first started it to where it is right now? Yeah, so this is my 11th year and, you know, it would have been 12th um, except for the pandemic year. And so I was able to kind of watch this thing grow into something that I never thought it would grow into. Initially, when I started my nonprofit, it was because I was going around to different friends, teammates, scouts, coaches. I was going around to uh, their football camps and I was I was seeing the impact that they would have on the youth and kind of seeing the youth eyes look up at these these guys that they idolize or they uh, want to grow up to be. Um, and I was like, wow, I never had this growing up. And so I wanted to start that back in my community. So I remember in 2011, I had my first ever event. It was called the Battle of the Legends. And it was the 2005 Ben Harbor basketball team was the year I graduated versus um, every class from 1990 until 2000. And we let them get their top 15 and we took our 2005 squad and we battled because it was always an argument about who was the best team to ever come to Ben Harbor. Yeah. And so we, <laughs> so we did that. Um, and so it went from that and that kind of sold out. It had a great, had a great turnout and then following that uh, it went to a football camp then a girl said you know what we want something for us too and so I said okay cool we'll do a cheer camp and the cheer camp <laughs> yeah. so, so it turned into a cheer camp and then it turned into just a one day event from having the football camps in the morning to having the basketball the celebrity basketball game at night um, to me having um, a gala that uh, later that evening and so it was like a whole day and and so it kind of turned from a whole day to, you know what, let's do more, right? I want to do more. And so it kind of spread out to a three-day event, which is what it is now. Uh, it went from that to me having a shopping spree um, every December in Ben Harbor in Detroit. And it just kind of went from there. Like, just me wanting to do more and give back and kind of do my portion, so. Yeah, and, you know, there's a lot of causes out there to support. I'm sure it's hard to, you know, maybe pick and choose what you, you know, want to want to make an impact on. But for this event specifically in, um, you know, trying to, to combat illiteracy and bring, you know, more reading into your community, why is that one so important to you? Uh, I think reading is fundamental, right? And so I think, like, moving forward, to be successful in anything, you have to be able to read, right? You have to be able to read your contract. You have to be able to draw up a contract. You have to be able to understand and comprehend what you're putting down. I think that's, uh, um, you know, this is, some people call it a myth. Um, some people say it's it's reality that, you know, the government based how they build prisons or the amount of prisons they build off of third grade literacy levels. Now, some people say it's a myth. Some people say, no, that's the real deal, right? And so I want to make sure that no kid from my community end up being that statistic because of, you know, the lack of them being able to read. And so if I can do my part to be able to better their future uh, just by changing this aspect of their life, then I'm doing my part, right? And so um, that's why it's important to me because I know how important reading is to me um, and what it's done for me in my life, so. Yeah, and I imagine, you know, after playing in the league, you've kind of transitioned now into this um, philanthropic role and, um, you know, making an impact on a community. How have you enjoyed this new aspect of, of your career after playing football? Yeah, man, I thought, I, I thought once I retired, I was going to be able to kick my feet up and just relax and, and, and have a little bit more free time. But I'm busier now than what I was when I was playing, which is a good thing. That was a good thing. Yeah, do you, I mean, do you miss it at all? Do you look back on any, you know, memories from from the league and, and your playing days? You know, you, you know, it's a funny, it's a funny thing. So I, I asked a, a, another person when I was playing a similar question, like, do you miss it? And um, he said something very interesting to me. When I retire, I kind of see what he meant. He said that I gave football everything I had. And so when I retired, 
I was able to walk away with no regrets and a smile on my face. And I can say that, um, do I miss it? Uh, certain, certain aspects, I miss the locker room. And you, you get that from a lot of guys. You miss the locker room, you miss coming in after practice and cracking jokes on your brothers and and, and, and having those conversations and, and that team camaraderie. That's kind of the things that you miss. You don't really miss the, the training or the, the practices. Sure. Or the you don't really miss that. But, you know, you, you respect it and it was a good time for me. And so from that aspect, yes, I, I would say I missed the locker room. But for the most part, uh, I kind of enjoy working out when I want to work out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I can choose by going in the morning. I can choose by going in the afternoon. And uh, we have a little bit more leeway. Yeah. And I think you still hold a, a special place in the, the hearts of Detroit Lions fans. Uh, um, what does that that mean for you um, to still kind of be be remembered there by that fan base? Yeah, you know what, I man? It's, it's it's always been love here, here for me in Detroit because I I went to school here and I was able to go and you know make good with the team. You know, hometown kid makes good, right? And so it, for me, it, it means a lot because I think the biggest compliment I could get for myself is when a player or I mean when when a supporter comes to me and says, "Listen, when you play." We can tell you played for the city. You ran with heart, and um, if every if everyone on your team had your same type of heart, um, we would have went farther, right? And so that's the biggest compliment that I, I, that I can get because, regardless of because I think all my teammates had heart, but regardless of that situation, for them to be able to see that I was playing for the city when I played uh, means the world because I really was. Uh, I represented that hard nose blue collar uh, Detroit mentality when I played. I wanted people to understand, like, this is how we play here in Detroit. Is it still Detroit versus everybody? It's always, always have, <laughs> always will be. Stop it. Always have, always will be. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you've had a chance to to keep up with the team at all during during the offseason, but any predictions or what do you kind of make of, of what the team could be this upcoming season? Uh, so... My prediction, so it's funny, my prediction last year was, was for us to win, uh, it was win four games and six games would be our best case scenario. And the thing is, regardless of what people may feel with the talent we had on the team, if you look at our record from last year, you'll say, oh, they're, they're not that good, right? If you look at the record, say, oh, they're, they're not going to be a contender. But if you look at uh, a lot of those games, we're right there even with, you know, the lack of talent compared to other teams' ro rosters because uh, we were literally right there. And the picks that uh, Brad Holmes, and I tell everyone this, that Brad Holmes is literally our secret weapon. Uh, the guy just don't miss, all right? <laughs> you don't miss. And uh, if you look at about five to six of the rookies he drafted last year were being productive, all right? They're being productive. Uh, if we have that same type of output this year with the, with the draft picks and he has one more draft class like this and then next year when golf contract is up and we have more free money going on the free agency, uh, we're really going to make some noise. So if we're talking about this year, yeah, we might not make a round for the playoffs, but within the next two to three years, we're going to be contenders and I'm going to be, we're going to be what, you know, we call in the media, the usual suspects, right? <laughs> Sure. I mean, do you think all of that is just a testament? I mean, you mentioned Brad Holmes, but Dan Campbell as well. And what do you make Dan of Campbell. him as a, as a head coach and, and yeah, being able I'll, to kind of lead them on this this turnaround a little bit? And, you know, I, I, I like Dan Campbell a lot just from the aspect that he brings to the game. So he's still um, he's still learning as well. You know, it's, you know, he's still learning the game as well when it comes to the play calling. But I know we have a new play caller in, but, you know, he was I think it was good for him as well to kind of to have that, get that experience. And the way that his team plays for him is the testament to how much they respect him as a coach. Now you have, you have two types of coaches. You have coaches that some people fear. You have coaches that some people love. And when you have a coach that you fear, you try not to mess up because you're like, I don't want to yell at me, All right? Yeah. And you have, coaches that, you have coaches that you love, and you're like, man, you know what? I don't want to let him down. So let me figure out how I can get this done. And it kind of reminds me of Jim Caldwell in the 2015 season when we went one to seven in the first in the first eight games, and then this, the next eight games 
we could have very well went a no, but you obviously remember that ghost face mask against the Packers and that kind of trickle into the next week against the Rams, but we ended up finish the season off six and two on um, the last eight games. And, um, we had no shot at the playoffs, but the guys were still playing for Coach Caldwell because his whole mindset was, I don't want you guys to do good for me. You know, I'm rich enough to pay King's ransom. I want you guys to be successful for you because you guys deserve this. Right? You guys have worked, uh, you guys have worked your butt off. And um, he said, one to seven, that's not hard to dig yourself out. <laughs> Just dig yourself out of, that's not hard. You want to do something hard, get married. <laughs> <laughs> And so that's what, so we always love Coach Call. We're respecting him and we, we played our bus off because we wanted him to stay around because um, he was a player's coach, but it was a guy who he demanded perfection um, and he held everyone accountable. And um, that's what I see in Dan Campbell with his players. Sure. And at least you got some some fond memories there of, of your time and you can, you know, look back at it with a, with a smile on your face. Yeah. But are you still in Detroit? Right now, is that where you're living? Yeah, I live. I, I live in Detroit. I, okay. I'm not leaving. I'm not. And, and you know, and one thing that I've always, I never understood. So I've been in Detroit since '05. When I say Detroit, like in Detroit. One thing I, I never understood, like when people come to or players come to Detroit, they would never bring them to Detroit to show them real estate, right? They would never show them like inside Detroit. But Detroit has a lot of beautiful places here. Uh, they always take them like out in the outskirts. And I'm like, why don't you ever like show players like inside Detroit. I never understood that. Uh, and so I made it uh, a testament, like if Detroit is paying me, I'm gonna live in Detroit and pay my taxes to Detroit. And so that's kind of how I felt, but I always respect, yeah. So what else are you, what else have you been up to besides um, some of your charity work? What are you doing maybe personally and, and professionally in your life right now? Uh, uh, you know, been a father, uh, been a father. Happy Father's Day. Happy late Father's Day. I, pre I appreciate it. Uh, being a dad, time to spend spending more time with my kids. Also, um, have been in real estate. I uh, started my real estate company back when I was playing back in 2013. and kind of grew it from there. Uh, I got into the cannabis field. Um, I got into the hemp and yeah. um, nonprofit work. Cool. Good stuff. Well, Joy, anything else you want to add before we let you go? Um, yeah, so if you guys want to get more information about uh, my charity weekend, about what we're doing, what we're trying to fight here at Quebec, just go to joyquebel.com, J-O-I-Q-U-E-B-E-L-L.com. Go to the charity weekend tab, uh, look at all the different events we have coming up. If you want to see our mission, our mission is right there on, on the homepage. And uh, we'll love for you guys to come out and be a part, donate, whatever you guys can do, because every dollar counts, every dollar matters. Every my every kid's mind matter. So I appreciate you guys coming out. And then also, um, crypto's on sale. So make sure you go get some. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. No problem. Thank you.